chapter, so that's the wrong verse for today, but we're starting chapter 7 in the 10th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled uh, The Killing of the Demon Tuna Varta. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So I'm going to read the uh, chapter summary first before we go to the first verse, which we don't have written down. That's all right. Uh, in this chapter, Sri Krishna's pastimes of breaking the cart, Shakatta Monjana, killing the Asura known as Trinavarta, and demonstrating the entire universe within his mouth, are especially described. When Shukadev Gosami saw that Maharaj Parikshit was eagerly awaiting to hear about the Lord's pastimes as a child, he was very much pleased and he continued to speak. When Sri Krishna was only three months old and was just trying to turn backside up, before he even attempted to crawl, Mother Yashoda wanted to observe a ritualistic ceremony with her friends for the good fortune of the child. Such a ritualistic ceremony is generally performed with ladies who also have small children. When Mother Yashoda saw that Krishna was falling asleep, because of other engagements, she put the child underneath a household cart called Shakoto. And while the child was sleeping, she engaged herself in other business pertaining to the auspicious ritualistic ceremony. Underneath the cart was a cradle, and Mother Yashoda placed her child in that cradle. The child was sleeping, but suddenly he awakened, and as usual for a child, he began to kick his legs, small legs. This kicking shook the cart, which collapsed with a great sound, breaking completely and spilling all its contents. Children who were playing nearby immediately informed Mother Yashoda that the cart had broken, and therefore she hastily arrived there in great anxiety with the other gopis. Mother Yashoda immediately took the child on her lap and allowed him to suck her breast. Then various types of Vedic ritualistic ceremonies were performed with the help of the brahmanas. Not knowing the real identity of the child, the brahmanas showered the child with blessings. Another day, when Mother Yashoda was sitting with her child on her lap, she suddenly observed that he had assumed the weight of the entire universe. She was so astonished that she had to put the child down. And in the meantime, Trinawarta, one of the servants of Kongsa, appeared there as a whirlwind and shook, took the child away. The whole tract of land known as Gokula became surcharged with dust. No one could see where the child had been taken and all the gopis were overwhelmed because he had been taken away in the dust storm. But up in the sky, the, asuras being, the asura, being overburdened by the child, could not carry the child far away. Although he, could al he also could not drop the child because the child had caught him so tightly that it was difficult for him to separate the child from his body. Thus Trinavarta himself fell down from a great, very great height, the child grasping him tightly by the shoulder and immediately died. The demon having fallen, the gopis picked the child up and delivered him to the lap of Mother Yashoda. Thus, Mother Yashoda was struck with wonder, and because, but because of Yogamaya's influence, no one could understand who Krishna was and what had actually happened. Rather, everyone began to praise fortune, praise fortune for the child, as she should say, praise good fortune for the child, having, saved, having been saved from such a calamity. Nanda Maharaj, of course, was thinking of the wonderful foretelling of Vasudeva and began to praise him as a great yogi. Later, when the child was on the lap of Mother Yashoda, the child yawned, and Mother Yashoda could see within his mouth the entire universe.
universal manifestation. So now we'll go ahead to text one to two, the first text in the chapter, and I'll just read since we don't have it written down here. Nope. Shi Rajavacha Yena Yena Vatarena Bhagavan Haririshvara Kuroti Karna Ramjani Mano Yane Chana Prabhu Yat Srinvato Pait Yarati Yarati Vitishna Viti Vitrishna Satuncha Shudaya Charaina Pumsa Bhaktir Harotat Purushe Chasatyam Tadeva Haram Vadamanya Sechet. Okay, you can repeat. Shri Raja Uvacha. Uh, the king inquired from Shukadeva Goswami. Yena Yena Vatarena. The pastimes exhibited by different varieties of incarnations. Bhagavan. The Supreme Personality of Godhead. Udihi, the Lord. Ishvara, the controller. Karoti, presents. Karnaram Yani. We're all very pleasing to the ear. Manat Yani. Very attractive to the mind. Cha, also. Naha, of us. Uh oh. Bravo, my lord. Shukadev Goswami. Yachrin Vataha. Of anyone who simply hears these narrations. Apaiti vanishes. Aratahi unattractiveness. Vitrishna dirty things within the mind that make us uninterested in Krishna consciousness. Satvamcha the existential position. In the core of the heart. Hmm. That actually means how the core of the heart exists. Existential means that which exists. You know, so the existential position. In other words, how the heart is existing at that particular point. Anyway, shudyati uh, becomes purified. Achirena very soon. Pumsaha of any person. Bhaktihi Arau Devotional attachment and service to the Lord. Tatpuruche with Vaishnavas. Cha also. Sakyam Attraction to association. Tat eva, that only. Haram, the activities of the Lord, which should be heard and kept on the neck as a garland. Vada, kindly speak. Manya say, you think it fit. Chet, if. It's a translation. Uh, King Parikshit said, My Lord Shukadeva Goswami, and all the various activities exhibited by the incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are certainly pleasing to the ear and to the mind. Simply by he one's hearing of these activities, the dirty things in one's mind immediately vanish. Generally, 
We are reluctant to hear about the activities of the Lord, but Krishna's childhood activities are so attractive that they are automatically pleasing to the mind and ear. Thus one's attachment for hearing about material things, which is the root cause of material existence, vanishes, and one gradually develops devotional service to the Supreme Lord, attachment for him, and friendship with devotees who give us the contribution of Krishna consciousness. If you think it fit, kindly speak about those activities of the Lord. So purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shilvapad Shilvapad Ki Jai. As stated in the Prema Vivarta, a Krishna Bhadi Mukha Haya Voga Vancha Kare. Nikati Stare Ma Asta Maya Tare Japatiya Dare. Our material existence is Maya or illusion in which we desire different varieties of material enjoyment and therefore change to different varieties of bodies. Brahmayam Sarabhutani Yantra Vudani Maya. Asanapi Kleshade Asha Deha. As long as we have these temporary bodies, they give us many varieties of tribulation. Adhyatvika, Adhibodika, and Adhidaivika. This is the root cause of all suffering, but this root cause of suffering can be removed by revival of our Krishna consciousness. All the Vedic literatures presented by Vyasadeva and other great sages are therefore intended to revive our Krishna consciousness, which begins to revive with Shravana, Kirtana, Srinvata, Svakata, Krishna. And that's from the Bhagavatam, first canto, second chapter, text 17. Srimad Bhagavatam and other Vedic literatures exist simply to give us a chance to hear about Krishna. Krishna has different avatars or incarnations, all of which are wonderful and which arouse one's inquisitiveness. But generally such avatars as Matsya, Kurnama, and Varaha are not as attractive as Krishna. First of all, however, we have no attraction for hearing about Krishna, and this is the root cause of our suffering. But Parikshit Maharaj specifically But Pariksit Maharaj specifically mentions, I was confirmed by the birds actually, that's the root cause of our suffering. We have no attraction to hearing about Krishna. See the birds actually did it again. But Pariksit Maharaj, but Pariksit Maharaj, anyway the birds, nothing to do about the birds, leave the birds alone. They're just listening to class. But Pariksit Maharaj specifically mentions that the wonderful activities of baby Krishna, which amaze Mother Yashoda and the other inhabitants of Raj are especially attractive. From the very beginning of his childhood, Krishna killed Bhutana, Tanavata, and Shakata Sura and showed the entire universe within his mouth. Thus, the pastimes of Krishna, one after another, kept Mother Yashoda up and all the inhabitants of Raj in great astonishment. The process, the process to revive one's Krishna consciousness is Adho, Shraddha, Tata, Sadhu, Sangho, Sangha, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, 1415. The pastimes of Krishna can be properly received from devotees. If one has developed a little bit of Krishna consciousness by hearing from Vaishnavas about the activities of Krishna, one becomes attached to Vaishnavas who are interested only in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, Parikshit Maharaj recommends that one hear about Krishna's childhood activities, which are more attractive than the activities of other incarnations, such as Matsya, Kurma, and Varaha. Wanting to hear more and more from Shukadeva Goswami, Maharaj of Parikshit requested him to continue describing Krishna's childhood activities, which are especially easy to hear and which create more and more inquisitiveness. Very wonderful verse in purport. So, Omagana Tibananda Shah, 
Gananjana Shilakaya Chakshur Miditam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. So here it is mentioned that Krishna's uh, childhood activities are especially, <coughs> especially attractive. Now, it's interesting to note that Krishna's babyhood activities, that is, uh, from when he is a little baby, uh, Komara, Kogonda, uh, they're only exhibited in the material world. Those activities where Krishna is a little tiny baby growing up, changing, you know, appearing to change his body. Of course, he never changes his body. Uh, Krishna always has the same transcendental body. They're only in the material world. In the spiritual world, you have the activities. Krishna is always Navayovana. Uh, I mean, he's always youthful, like 16 years old. But in the material world, Krishna appears to grow up. Uh, so, therefore, these very attractive activities, of course, all of Krishna's activities are attractive, even when he's grown up, even when he's 16. He never gets more than 16. Uh, are attractive, but those activities are different than the activities of Krishna uh, turning his uh, back up or whatever, or uh, being a baby, or pulling on the tails of cows, as we're going to hear later on, calves, and using the calves to pull them around in the mud. I mean, these are especially really cute activities. You know, as far as the word cute, they can be best be applied to uh, Krishna's activities of a little baby. And devotees generally are attracted to these activities so much so that they like worshiping the deity. Practically everybody has a deity, Vala Gopal, right? Sometimes you call it Ladu Gopal, <laughs> but Bala Gopal. Everyone is just like really attracted to Bala Gopal. So that's why these activities are being exhibited. But in general, the activities of Krishna are attractive not only to you know, conditioned souls, but to liberated souls. And even Krishna's activities are attractive to other incarnations, which is quite interesting because other incarnations of Krishna, other manifestations of Krishna are the same. Uh, and we mentioned many times before, especially in Jamasthani, we are mentioning Dvaita Chuta Nadi Rananta Rupa Madhyam Purana Purushan Nadiyovanam Chada, verse from the Brahma Samhita, where it says there's one God, uh, but he has Ananta Rupam. He has Ananta, uh, means unlimited uh, expansions, manifestations. And we talked about his different types of expansions the other day like the Purusha avatars and the Manvantara avatars and the Guna avatars and the Leela avatars and the Yuga avatars. We talk about all that. But all of Krishna's Vishnu Tantra expansions are the same person. But even as the same person, he's acting differently and even in one sense thinking differently. <laughs> in each and every incarnation. This is Yogamaya. Because by the influence of Yogamaya, Krishna forgets he's God. And by the in influence of Yogamaya, the other um, manifestations of Krishna have different activities and different consciousness even. Of course, they're all, all God. But even different, let's say, foci or focuses of their attention than Krishna and Vrindavan, which is really amazing. In other words, it's all a chincha. So let's tell a story about this. So once upon a time, and this is not a Vrindavan story, uh, but once upon a time, uh, Krishna was in Dwarka. And he was with his great friend Arjuna. And being with his great friend Arjuna, uh, they were enjoying each other. You know, they were, like Arjuna forgets that Krishna's God, sometimes he sits on the same bed, jokes with him, or like friends do, you know, sometimes they wrestle with each other. I mean, if Arjuna was thinking that Krishna was God, he would never wrestle with God. That would be incredible. So anyway, they were sitting there, and then a Brahmin came, and the Brahmin had a complaint. 
And his complaint was that he, his wife had a child, actually it happened several times, and the children kept disappearing after they were born. And everyone was thinking, oh, they're being kidnapped, right? They're being kidnapped. So he went to the king, naturally. And the king, of course, the king was a Rusena, but Krishna was that functioning more or less in that stead, too. And Arjuna was there, too. So he went to uh, Krishna, and he, he said, Krishna, my children are being kidnapped after they're born. And of course, it's the king's responsibility. If something is happening, you should be able to contact the king or the prime minister or the president or whoever's in charge. Actually, originally in the Vedic system, even up to 2,000 years ago in India, everyone had a right to contact the king, to go to the king. And there was free speech. You could complain, you could make a request, Everyone had a right, especially the Brahmins had a right. So this Brahmin, he complained to Krishna. And also, if you have a godly kingdom, nothing like this happens. I mean, there's no question of people being kidnapped in a godly kingdom. There's no question of people dying prematurely in a godly kingdom. Just like with Lord Ramachandra, uh, there was a Shudra who was doing Brahminical activities in Lord Ram's kingdom, and People were dying prematurely. And Lord Ram went out and immediately cut the head of the Shudra off. So in the, ca the case, this case, Arjuna said to the Brahmin, don't worry. He said, I am the great Arjuna. He was bragging. That's one of the problems of being a Kshatriya, that you brag. You say, no one can defeat me. I am great. Hmm. I remember in the United States many years ago, there was this boxer who declared himself to be the greatest. <laughs> he had won the championship, you know, boxing championship. And actually what happened is because he had boxing so much, his mind was destroyed. So the devotees ran into him in the airport. You understand, distributing books, they were distributing books. And he, he could hardly speak, so the greatest became uh, completely incompetent, completely disabled. So in this case, Ar Arjuna, he was bragging. I am the greatest Arjuna, I am the Arjuna, and I have my Gandiva bow, and nobody can defeat me, Hoodie bow. <laughs> Actually, in, in the Mahabharata story, you have Arjuna who had taken a, a vow that if anyone insulted him and his bow, he would kill them. That's how proud he was. I mean, in the Mahabharata, you have this interesting story where Yudhisthira one time insults the Gandiva bow because Arjuna has left the battlefield, not because of cowardice, but he's left the battlefield because Yudhisthira had been injured. So Arjuna goes to see his brother. That's natural. And Yudhisthira says, you know, what are you here for? What's the use of that stupid Gandhi Babo? And Arjuna says, well, got to kill you. Because <laughs> he had taken the vow to kill whoever insulted the Gandhi Babo and his use of the Gandhi Babo. So he takes, you know, I guess the bow and gets ready to kill Yudhisthira. And Krishna says, not a good idea. Uh, you shouldn't really kill your brother. You have to figure out another way to kill him. And so the way he killed Yudhisthira was very interesting because you could see it reflects on Vaishnav culture and etiquette. He actually insulted Yudhisthira because it, to insult your older brother is considered like killing him. That's how heavy it is in the, you know, strict, let's say strict in Vaishnav culture. Older brother, younger brother, like that or teacher or guru, like that, it's, just, it's like killing him. So, and the way he insulted him was that he uh, used the first person pronoun to refer to him. Just like in India, you have ap. Ap, ap uh, is a formal, then two 
is the informal. So if you use the informal, let's say if you go, let's say you go to your guru and say two, whew, not good, right? What do you think? Not so good. In many languages, you have a formal and an informal. Uh, and English, you don't. Everything is just you, 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 you. <laughs> English is a businessman's language. It's good for doing business. Would you like to buy this? You know, like that. Prabhupada said English is a businessman's language. German sounds like barking dogs. Prabhupada talked about languages like that. So, and uh, so, so anyway, so Arjuna said to Yudhisthira, you, and that was an insult, and it was like killing Yudhisthira. And then Arjuna, this is also an item of etiquette, Arjuna felt so guilty for insulting his brother that he got ready to kill himself. <laughs> you see how strict the etiquette was in the Vedic society, and everybody was... It's nice, people were not, at least the higher classes, they were not committing offenses against anybody. Because you were very careful in dealing with people. You know, very, very careful. You treated everyone as part and parcel of Krishna and you respected Krishna's Varnashram system. So uh, Arjuna uh, thought, you know, now I've done something horrible, I have to kill myself. So he got ready to kill himself and Krishna said, this is not a good idea either. And Arjuna thought, well, actually, I can kill myself by bragging again. So Arjuna started bragging about himself again. And in one sense, when you brag about yourself, you say, I'm so wonderful, I'm so great. Then it's just like, it destroys your reputation, which for Kshatriya is actually worse than death. You know, someone bragging about themselves. Hmm. Like you see when... Uh, Lord Ram was fighting uh, Robin. He actually insulted, you know, you, you actually see this, that Robin was insulted by Lord Ram. You know, just, that was a type of killing Robin. He said, you are, you know, you are like the stool of man-eaters. <laughs> of course, that's very Kshatriya too. Like in uh, soccer games or rugby games, I'm sure they insult each other too while they're playing the game. But, but anyway, that's like, that's an insult. So getting back to the whole story, so I was just telling a story within a story. Getting back to the whole story, Arjuna bragged to the Brahmin, he says, as long as I am here, the mighty Arjuna with my Gandhipa bow, no one will be able to kidnap your children. I will protect you. So Arjuna goes to the Brahmin's house and he stands outside with his Gandhipa bow, protecting everything. And guess what? The Brahmin's wife has a kid. And the kid disappears again. And so Arjuna is getting ready to kill himself again. <laughs> He's thinking, I couldn't defend the Brahmin. I took a vow that I would defend the Brahmin or I would kill myself. And it's interesting that Arjuna does, even in the Battle of Kurukshetra, he's taking these vows uh, that Krishna doesn't really approve of. Because he's proud. Shows what proud. Of course, it's, it's transcendental. He is a pure devotee. This is a pastime. But still, in the Battle of Kurukshetra, he took a vow one day to kill Jayadroth the same day or else he would kill himself. You see, this is a constant, uh, constant theme in Arjuna's life. So he took a vow, I'm going to kill Jayadroth in one day or I'll kill myself and so it happened that the whole Kaurava army was protecting Jayadrath and it was actually impossible for him to approach Jayadrath. And in order to save him, Krishna had to do this trick of appearing, of making it appear that the sun had gone down that day and the Kaurava army let down their guard. Jayadrath came out and Jayadrath was dancing. Ha ha, you're going to have to kill yourself. And Arjuna was getting ready to kill himself. And then uh, Krishna made the sun come up. And then, <laughs> then Arjuna just like chopped off Jayadra's head, made Jayadra's head fall on his father's lap because the father had taken a vow that anybody who caused his son's head to fall on the ground would die immediately, go up in flames. 
So the father got the head on his lap, the father threw the head away, and the father died instead of Arjuna. So, so anyway, so Arjuna got ready to kill himself, this time too with the story of the Brahmin's son. And Krishna said, it's not a good idea. We'll get the Brahmin's son back so you don't have to kill yourself. So Krishna said to Arjuna, let's get on my chariot and let's go for a ride. <laughs> so they got on the chariot and they went for a ride. And of course they went for a ride uh, to a place where we could never go, at least in this lifetime. They pierced through all the coverings of the material universe, you know, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego, and ultimately uh, passed out of the material universe through the Brahma Jyoti, you know, the effulgence of the Brahma Jyoti, the darkness, the Brahma Jyoti, all that other stuff, and came to the Mahavishnu. Hmm. And there was Mahavishnu, because Mahavishnu is outside of all the universes. You got dark Garbhadakshi Vishnu inside, Mahavishnu outside. So they saw the Mahavishnu, and Mahavishnu said, you know, I just wanted to see you, Krishna. <laughs> so in other words, uh, the moral of the story is that even Vishnu is attracted to Krishna. So he made that arrangement. The whole trick was stealing a Brahmin's son, so Krishna and Arjuna would go through and... Uh, he could see Krishna. So Krishna is so attractive even to his other incarnations. Wow. So what to speak of ourselves? So as we mentioned yesterday, yesterday we quoted from the uh, fourth text of the first chapter of the 10th canto, which is, the, which is actually the uh, nutshell verse for the whole 10th canto. Uh, it's actually a very important verse. First. Chapter, text four. Nivritta Tarsha Rupa Gumi Manat Bhavoshiva Shrocha Mano Vidamat Kautama Shloka Gunan Vada Puman Virajeta Bana Pashana. And that verse is pretty much saying the same thing that this verse today is saying. Uh, that verse says that Nivritta uh, Tarsha, and this is the same thing in this verse, uh, it, it says, One's attachment, in this verse today is, one's attachment for hearing about material things which are the root cause of material existence vanishes. And then Prabhupada talks in his purport about the threefold misery. So, tarsha means miseries. Nivritta tarsha. So one can overcome all miseries. Upagiyamana. Vavotsura shrota. By hearing uh, about Krishna. Mano biramat, which are pleasing to the mind. He's very pleasing. Mano Biramat. Ka Uttama Shloka, those transcendental verses, uh, filled with good quality, Gnanavada, uh, filled with transcendental qualities. And then, uh, of course, the verse I, part of the verse I uh, commented on yesterday. Puman Vitajeta Banal Pashuknat. The only one who is not going to be attracted to these transcendental pastimes are people eating meat or people killing the soul or people killing cows, or killing any sort of animal, uh, because they're in the mode of ignorance. So, if we hear about these, another point Prabhupada makes here in the purport, that if we hear about other things, it entangles, has the opposite effect. It causes us to be miserable. Like hearing about what's called gramyakata, ordinary dealings in this material world, or politics, it's like sometimes I may look at the news and it just, it just makes me an anxiety. <laughs> Isn't it? You read the news and you just get anxiety about different things, about the hurricanes coming. It's like yesterday we're talking about there's a hurricane coming to uh, our, close to our temple in North Carolina. And just like, ah. And then I read about the politics in America. <laughs> so it doesn't take away my miseries. <laughs> hearing about mundane things, I just get more and more anxiety. Because it's, in this material world, nowadays, generally, the main diseases people have are not so much physical, but physical diseases come from the mental diseases, are anxiety and depression, right? Like you hear about these things, you get either depressed or an anxiety. 
But hearing about Krishna, you don't get depressed. I mean, I've never gotten depressed hearing about Krishna. I've never gotten anxiety hearing about Krishna. I just become happy and you know, blissful. And everything's very light. Otherwise, everything is so heavy. So, uh, therefore, uh, if one hears about Krishna in this way, as Prabhupada quotes here, Adho Shraddha Tata Sadhu Sangho Tao Bhajana Kriya, then you want to hear more. You never get tired. You know, you get tired of mundane things. You hear the same song, the same uh, uh, pastime, oh, not pastime, of course, the same activity over and over again. It's boring. But with Krishna, it's not like been there, seen it, done it. You hear it over and over again. It's, it's nice. And then you want to associate with devotees, but not Kanishta Adhikaris. You don't want to associate with Kanishta Adhikaris. You, you feel mer merciful towards them. Kanishta means materialistic devotee. Someone who comes to the temple, worships the deity, sees Krishna in the temple, and then outside of the temple room, no more Krishna. Krishna doesn't, Krishna doesn't live outside the temple room. <laughs> We've limited Krishna to that door. You understand? Put a guard at the door so Krishna can't get out. <laughs> He's only in this room, nowhere else. So you only see Krishna, you don't see Krishna in everyone's heart. And, uh, and you're thinking Krishna is simply meant to fill, fulfill your desires. That's a Kanishta, materialistic devotee. So one wants to care or associate with those, because the Kanishta Adhikari is talking so much nonsense anyway. So one wants to associate with one who is more advanced, one who is a, at least a Madhyama Adhikari, who's interested in the ninefold process of bhakti, as Prabhupada says here, beginning with Shavanam Kirtana. So that's how we can tell whether someone is advanced. Not by how they look or mystic powers or something like that, but whether they're interested in hearing about Krishna. They're attracted to hearing about Krishna. So uh, by associating, we become very attached to living with devotees. I mean, I could never imagine living with people who are not devotees. I mean, even sometimes, you know, I, I go to visit my family, because most of them are dead by now. <laughs> so I go to visit my family, and it's just like, uh, like Rupa Goswami says, it's like living in a cage of fire or tigers or something like that. It's just like, you know, you're nice to them, you love them. You know, we love everybody. You love them, but it's just like, ooh. Ooh. Like, I mean, I gotta be serious about it. It is true. It's like, you know, let me take a bath. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, we love them. Yeah, you know, we love everybody. I mean, I, even, you know, I, uh, there's cats out there. I love them, but I'm not gonna pick them up and kiss them. <laughs> it's a bit, little difference. You love, love them and how you manifest. And I chant Hare Krishna with them. I get, you know, cats, I give them prasadam. But they're not going to cuddle them like that. So, because they're moochy, right? And when I last turned, animals are moochy. Actually, there was, uh, this, there's many stories recently how dogs, sometimes they lick someone and the person dies afterwards because they have all these bacteria. Every dog has all these bacteria. Probably says poisonous. The dog's mouth is poisonous. Anyway, anyway, don't want to discourage anybody who has pets. So, uh, so the point is that just being with devotees, it's so nice. I mean, I love living next to the temple or staying in devotee's house. It's just, it's just really happiness because devotees are focused on Krishna. So it's, it's so nice. I mean, I love being here. We can be with devotees. And then... Uh, we eat food cooked by devotees. And so we, we love devotees. That's a symptom. That's a symptom of someone who is Madhya He loves devotees, loves everybody, but wants only to be with devotees of the Lord. Satam prasanga mama virya sambado pavanti rikarna prasayana kata trajoshana vasu apavarga varmani shravatiya bhakti nukramishti. In the uh, conversation between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy, uh, the conversation, the questions were asked by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what's the most miserable thing? Lord Chaitanya asked Ramananda Roy that. And Ramananda Roy said, 
to be separated from the devotees. He said, that's the most miserable. He didn't say, you know, to, uh, to let's say, not have enough food or something like that. <laughs> you know, most of us are thinking, the most miserable thing is to be hungry. But the most miserable thing is to be separated from Vaishnava. So anyway, so this is what Prabhupada says here, that one develops an attraction to Vaishnavas. Ado shradatata sadhu sangota. And then naturally, you just do what the Vaishnava is doing, both Narta and Navriti, and naturally you want to become more purified. You pray to Krishna, please get rid of these anartas in my heart, because that's what's causing us pain. Lust, anger, greed, illusion, envy. This is actually what, what's causing us pain, is lust, because it's never satisfied in that. Anger. You know, someone's angry. Actually, if someone's angry, this is very interesting. If someone's angry, it affects the physical body and everything around them. Uh, yesterday I saw an experiment that someone did. They actually took some chapel, a rice, and they cooked rice and put it in three different containers and sealed the containers. You ever seen this before? And in one container, they, they were thinking, love, love, love to the container. I don't know how you love rice, but anyway, so they, they, they said, I love you. Another container, they just said, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And in the third container, uh, they just ignored it. So they left those containers there for about two weeks. You know, you know what happens when you leave rice for two weeks? And sealed container. So the one that they were loving became, hmm, was it practically as fresh as it was when they put it in. And the one that they hated had all this green stuff. You know, you ever seen green stuff growing on old food? Ooh, it looked like disgusting. And they, the, uh, the one that they ignored was somewhere in between. If anyone's interested in seeing that video, I can send you a link to it. But anyway, so, so consciousness affects even matter. That's the point I'm making. You know, if, you, if you're happy in Krishna consciousness and loving, then you're going to be healthier. And it'll affect the whole area around you. I mean, that's a Vaishnava. Vaishnava is really happy. Keval and Anandakanda. Prabhupada said, Anandakanda, it's, it's only the path Keval and Anandakanda. Uh, that's that's Narottama Das, of course, uh, Prabhupada quoted from him. I mean, it's only the path of happiness. And then it, everything, body gets affected around you. I mean, I remember being with Prabhupada. And you just become happy, but being in the same room with Prabhupada. I mean, even, even if Prabhupada was chastising you, you were happy. Yeah, I remember, I remember you know, Prabhupada sometimes chastising you. Hmm. I mean, you start crying, but you're happy. <laughs> because there's positive energy, positive Krishna conscious energy. So anyway, so, and then you want, to, you want to become happy too, so you work on your anarthas, and having these anarthas affects everyone else around you. Like if you find an angry person, it affects everybody. It doesn't only affect you. Or a lusty person, it affects everybody. Uh, so, anartha and is shot, and then you become nishti, you become steady in devotional service, and ultimately, after going through ruchi and bhava, and shakti and bhava, you get prema. So that's Krishna consciousness. It all starts with hearing. So any questions or comments? or arguments, or problems. The birds liked the class today. <laughs> they were probably, probably devotees who had pet birds in their last life and died thinking of their bird. <laughs> and they'd come to attend Bhagavatam class. So, any questions, comments, arguments? Problems? No? Everybody awake? No? Okay, anyway, so look at all the birds here. So, all glories to Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.